Most kids look forward to Saturday mornings, waking up without a care in the world, just your Lucky charm cereal and Saturday morning cartoons. Not me. I hated the weekends because it meant playing a game of which classmates door will we not go on today during Saturday morning field service as a child to Jehovah's Witness parents. Are you prepared for Jehovah's return? Because if you're not, I have a plan for you. I hated it because it meant I was put on the spot delivering a script we rehearsed for hours, and by we, I mean myself and the mirror using flashcards that my mom wrote for me. That was one for if an elderly person came to the door, or a different one for if it was a classmate on the other side of the door. They use it as the opportunity for me to explain why I didn't participate in the gift exchange for Christmas. Some use it as a joke for the week when we would return to school on that Monday, calling me preacher while doing an impression of a Southern Baptist pastor. That led to us making a script for when it happened the next time. My scripts were written on index cards. My vocabulary words were also written on index cards. One day in class, my cards caught someone's attention because it clearly had way more writing than just the one word. What's all that? It's my scripts. Why do you keep your scripts? You mean like scriptures? No, like my conversation so that I know how to answer. Your parents didn't give you any? This led to a conversation on how does she know what to say when someone asked a question. She looked at me through my thick Urkel glasses to what I would guess is a mix of confusion and curiosity. Mm, the word is perplexed. As she asked more questions that I didn't have an answer to, I write those down and ask my mom. As many of you who are still here, and I thank you for that, you likely see this behavior is not normal. Sure, we might play out a scenario in our head. So I'll say this and he's going to say that. But then when he says that, I'll say this. And then he'll reply with this and so on and so on. Scripting doesn't always have to be written down. But growing up under that, insert whatever you want to call it, being forced to raise my hand and give the answer from the watchtower questions that was just whispered in my ear to being forced to join the theocratic ministry school to give public talks from a podium in front of the congregation. I had to write out what I would say. I had to practice the pace and the tone and it was also timed. Don't go under but don't go over and when it's done someone will get on the stage behind you giving you notes on what they learned and what you can improve on i didn't sign up to be a public speaker this wasn't what i asked for my first job i was given a script for the drive through my second job i was given a script for selling frozen lemonade my first job out of high school was at a call center we had a book full of scripts from sales to retention as a flight attendant, we had our briefings, which included reading your duties for that flight out loud to the crew, so we were all on the same page and no one could say, I didn't know that was my responsibility. What I'm getting at is that at this point, scripting has become a part of my day-to-day -day life. And no, it wasn't odd to me that everyone else that wasn't a part of that organization didn't script. But what was odd to me was that they knew what to say and how to just wing it in life. I still freeze up like a deer in headlights when I'm speaking to anyone outside of my comfort view. And when they ask me to confirm the last four digits of my phone number when I'm picking up a mobile order, I freeze. I'm like, I don't call myself. I don't know my number. I feel like I'm overly cheerful or either sketchy as fun with delivery people. How's your night going? Thanks, you too. Now I sound like I'm new to earth. He was supposed to say, thanks, have a good night after delivering the pizza and not ask a question I wasn't prepared for. But in all honesty, I've tried to stop scripting. I've been working on it and it's still hard even after a diagnosis. I feel like if I would allow myself to freeze up in the moments, like I do in my day-to-day -day life, and like I do when I just can't get the words out, if I would've left the spaces in that YouTube tells me to cut out, those things would've been seen. Essentially, I believe this is why I was misdiagnosed the first time. I wasn't prepped to stop taking any medication as some practitioners request, or to be myself and try to be as authentic to my day-to-day -day as possible as others suggest during the process. I treated it like a job interview that I desperately wanted. I answered the questions how I thought they wanted me to answer, and I cared how I appeared to them, as if I perfectly matched the first time with the specialist who didn't catch it and misdiagnosed it with BPD. Her misdiagnosis wasn't about me not wanting to accept her diagnosis. It was because my own research had not pointed to that at all. It was that when I looked at the verses of this versus that, that was one that I definitely did not have. It was one the other practice did not find in their report. That experience was one I'm still not able to speak on without getting pissed all over again. And since some of you think that I curse too much, I'll try to hold off on that conversation until I can do it without cursing that out. Maybe one day. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, subscribe. Whole binders full of, uh, of women.